Hello everyone, welcome back to Nib Picking. Today we are gonna be looking at a pen that I'm really excited to talk to you about uh, for two reasons. One, um, it took a really long time to get here uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. I think I ordered this pen about five weeks ago. It just came a couple of days ago. And um, the other reason is because I've actually not used it before. Normally the pens that I review are pens that I've already owned and tested out, but this time I thought maybe I'll just try looking at a pen for the first time and filming my first reactions, first impressions, and then doing a project with it. So this is the pen, the Jin Hao 51A. Um, it's not a very expensive pen, it's an under $10 range. Um, and if you look at it, it's pretty sleek. I'm excited by how thin it is. I thought it'd be about as thick as my Pilot Metropolitan, but in fact, um, I'll do a comparison of them later, but in fact, it's a little bit thinner, which is kind of cool. And if you can see this barrel, um, that is made of wood. So pretty cool. Second feature that I'm interested in, a first time for me, if I take this cap off, is this hooded nib. Looks like a little bee stinger. Um, I guess hooded nibs are a little bit controversial in the fountain pen community. Some people really hate them. I think they're pretty cool. And when you've got, you know, a bunch of nibs that already look like the standard fountain pen nib, having something different is uh, kind of fun. So I'm all for it. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the parts and features of the pen. Uh, we are going to uh, look at what kind of lines it can make. We'll check out uh, an ink that I'd really like uh, to show you and uh, we'll do a drawing sample and I'm gonna weigh in at the end. Is this a pen that I'm gonna use for art? Stick around to find out. All right, everyone, so um, here we are with the pen. Like I said, the 51A comes in a couple of uh, different finishes. There's three different types of wood. I have the one that's called Tiger Wood and I think it's called that because it's um, got some obvious kind of stripe patterns. It's a little bit dark. Um, but you can see the grain of the wood there. Um, it also comes in a turned acrylic and a couple of other different color finishes. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely check them out um, on your favorite pen dealer or uh, they sell them on Amazon as well. You can see the cap here is made of uh, stainless steel. There's a, um, I believe that's supposed to be the Jin Hao logo, but uh, it wasn't done very well. In my personal opinion, I feel like it would be better to leave that detail out and just make this smooth because it feels also kind of rough on the skin like uh, it could scratch you. Um, other than that, the cap looks really nice. There's kind of a little pointed finial on the top here and the clip is solid. I feel like you could easily um, clip this around uh, your pocket, in your shirt or wherever it is that you keep your pens um, and it'll be secure but it's not too stiff that it doesn't move at all. You can see that. So I'm gonna take the cap off here. Now, I really like kind of the proportions here. It's like a 70% a body of the pen and maybe a 30% um, this uh, section right here, but it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have strong steps in between. So no matter where you hold this, it's probably gonna be pretty comfortable. Um, it goes right to the edge. You can see here's the, um, the nib. And uh, this is an extra fine nib, according to the description uh, when I bought it. So um, that's really different for me. I have two other Jin Hao's. I have an X450 and an X750, both with a medium nib. So um, I'm really excited to see if this extra fine delivers a really good extra fine line. I'm assuming it'll be like a European uh, extra fine, so not quite as, as fine as like a Japanese nib, like a Platinum or a, a Pilot or something like that. But um, still, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. So we take this section off and um, there's some metal threads inside. So that makes me feel like the pen's gonna be secure and last for a long time. I imagine wooden threads would not be conducive to the pen lasting a very long time. So looks they look pretty good they look pretty solid um and uh yeah this is really light this is probably the lightest pen i've ever owned 
this section of the pen you can see definitely there's um, some nice smooth transition between the metal and the plastic of the of the section with the the hood and this is just a standard international converter pops right out this feels a bit on the cheap side but if there were any part of the pen that they were gonna cut corners with I'd rather it be this converter because I can always buy one that's nicer if I want to or swap it out for a different pen that also came with a standard international converter these things are not expensive to buy and it comes with one that works so that's gonna be good enough for me um, anyway these are the parts of the pen and I'm gonna fill it up with an ink I'm actually gonna do a little unboxing here because this is an ink that I've had for quite some time but haven't been able to use in anything yet this is a uh, Colorverse ink Colorverse is a, a fountain pen ink company based in South Korea I have a soft spot for South Korea because I lived there for a very long time um, and it's interesting to see them get into the fountain pen game there's only a couple of companies that produce inks and I haven't heard of too many that produce pens but I'd love to buy a Korean fountain pen sometime in the future in the meantime this is a pen from their most recent season I believe called joy in the ordinary and the name of the ink is delicious sleep and so it's a purplish kind of ink and there's a cat yawning on the front and um, yeah joy in the ordinary is the name of their uh, season they have different seasons with different names a lot of them relating to science which is exciting for me as a science teacher but I ended up choosing this one because um, I just like that purple color and I don't have any ink that that's that's that color so I'm gonna open it up right now and we'll see what it looks like inside so um, yeah there are a couple of things I'd really like to see coming out of this ink I'd like it to be um, kind of on the dry side something that that um, can dry easily and isn't too wet so it doesn't feather that's what I'm interested in in inks for um, an artist the colors can be just your own kind of preference and I like having different colored inks the design of this box is really cool they put a lot of detail and effort into it and a lot of these logos are from other types of ink you can see they have kind of a science influence there's a lot of stuff about outer space Mars Rover um, satellites things like that and here is the ink it's a lovely 30 milliliter bottle not too big not too small this picture of a yawning cat on the front and it's kind of um, egg shaped I guess it says color verse on the top a couple of things inside we'll just take a really quick look and then we're gonna fill this pen up okay there's a bunch of stickers that pertain to all the different inks in this particular season so there's one called walk the dog under the shade rainy day coffee brunch brunch date and delicious sleep that's the one that we have um, here today but I've heard that these stickers are for in case you want to um, label samples if you have samples of these inks so um, there's kind of this attitude of wanting to share your inks and um, sometimes when you order inks from this company they'll send you a small bottle that you're supposed to be able to trade them around I don't know anyone who would do that with their inks but it's definitely a cool idea and these stickers are nice and the last thing that's in here is okay oh yeah so this is kind of a big picture that includes all the different inks from this season here's ours down here and the other ones that were mentioned in a whole drawing so you could see they put a lot of uh, thought and effort into the different seasons of inks and um, here's what the bottles look like so yeah this is very cool the presentation is really great this ink is a little bit more on the expensive side than some other inks you could get but I really like the presentation and I, if I like this ink and how it goes down on paper I definitely will be purchasing from them again so uh, without further ado let's fill up this pen all right we're here with delicious sleep I'm gonna pull the top off the cap very carefully okay not quite as full as say like the noodlers ink bottles but a decent amount of fill and of course uh, it's measured out as 30 milliliters so if that's what it says is in the bottle that's what I believe 
I'm gonna put the pen into the ink bottle and I believe the breather hole for this pen because of the hooded nib is just right on the edge there. So I'm pretty sure if we could just put it a little bit in the edge, we should be able to fill it. And there we go. I'm not going for a full fill. Personally, I like to change my inks and pens around often and I like to clean my pens often. So for me, two thirds full, that'll do. And if I need more, I can just always fill it again because I love filling my pens. Great. Let's get to drawing. Okay, so I thought before uh, going ahead with my drawing sample, I'd open this book up, my sketchbook, and uh, go to a blank page. Maybe just have a, a look at what kind of lines I can get out of this pen and see what techniques I can apply. Um, forgot to mention this while I was filling it up, but actually the one thing, um, I've never owned a pen with a hooded nib before, so I'm kind of learning about them as I use this one. But uh, one of the things I noticed that's pretty cool is after filling my pen with ink, I barely had to do any blotting to get it to be nice and clean. So that's pretty cool. Um, another advantage to having a hooded nib. But let's see how it writes. And by the way, the posting of this cap is really secure. In a way, it's more secure than putting it on the front to actually capping the pen which feels kind of weird. And that's one kind of criticism that I, I have of this pen is that the capping feels kind of weird, like you don't know when it's in or when it should be pushed more. But it, it, it posts really securely to the point that it weighs it down. If you don't really like really lightweight pens, then you can, uh, you can post it and it feels pretty much on par with um, a heavier pen made of metal. But I'm actually gonna unpost because I, I'm interested in this light feeling and I'm just gonna uh, play around with some of these lines and let's let's start with doing a little bit of um, hatching Okay So I can get some pretty decent hatch lines This feels about as thin as I want it to be for a um, an extra fine Little bit on the scratchy side which I also don't mind because I used to work with uh, like crow quills and dip pens and those are super scratchy, but this doesn't feel that bad. Um, just you can feel the texture of the paper. There's some scratchiness. I'm gonna see how it goes with some kind of random scribbles. This is another way that I sometimes get texture into my drawings is just kind of randomly scribbling. Okay, and I'm noticing if you turn it slightly, there's definitely a, a sweet spot. And that's one complaint people sometimes have about hooded nibs is that there's a definite sweet spot where you have to hold the pen a certain way. I don't mind learning that and applying it to my drawings. So for me, that's not a big deal. I am loving this delicious sleep, the purple ink pen. Uh, the purple ink here looks really great. So the delicious sleep is a beautiful purple color. I'm really happy with it. Let's see reverse writing. I'm gonna turn the pen upside down and see Oh yeah, okay. You can get some razor thin lines with reverse writing and it doesn't feel any more or less scratchy than the other side of the nib. I might try and learn how to do some nib maintenance because I've done some, um, I've got some supplies for that and see if I can smooth out this nib a little bit. But it's definitely not unpleasant. One thing that I think could be an issue is filling in large areas. So I'm gonna take this little square here and just see how well I can fill in. Well, that's not bad. Considering how fine this nib is, it's not too dry. Definitely all this ink plus this extra fine nib is tearing up my paper, but that's really the paper's fault. I use cheap paper on purpose. Anyway, this is good. I'm very happy with how it writes and let's see if we can get a cool drawing out of it. All right. Yep, so we're doing the drawing sample. Um, for this pen, I was trying to think what I could draw that would 
kind of typify what this pen means to me, what it looks like, what it feels like. And the only thing I could really think of is analog. You know, there's so many digital tools today and this pen just looks like a piece of history almost with it. The barrel being made of wood, the fountain pen being such a historical um, type of uh, writing mechanism as opposed to more recent technology. Even the ballpoint pen is more recent technology and now we have uh, digital styluses like uh, the Apple Pencil and things like that. So um, analog. And as I was thinking of analog, um, the thing that came to my mind was this old four channel Sennheiser mixer that I had back in my uh, film school days. I used it to record audio for my student films and um, other projects that I had, including hosting an open mic night that I used to do back in the day. So um, I'm a big fan of sound equipment, especially the old school stuff. Uh, I don't have a lot of my equipment anymore, so it was fun to look back at this and see all the different parts and remember using it and um, trying to get the best quality recording when I was doing uh, recording in my old two-bedroom apartment with my five roommates back in college. Um, I don't know what happened to that mixer. I think I gave it to someone or sold it to someone many years ago. So it's not something that I use these days, but it is something that uh, I have fond memories of. Um, one of the things I noticed about this pen is the ability to do reverse writing really consistency consistently was great. As a matter of fact, I'm doing reverse writing for a large portion of this drawing, especially the little knobs. Those are almost all done with reverse writing and the really thin line that you get with the pen, which was cool. Um, one thing that's not so great about the pen is because it's such a thin line, filling in large blocks of space um, with all with all that ink is not as much fun. That's not easy to do. But um, the pen itself performed really well if you're looking for something that gives you a razor sharp line. Um, this is great for that, particularly with the reverse writing. Um, I've recently gotten some tools uh, for playing around with nibs and one of the things I really like to do is uh, to try and smooth out both ends of this nib because it's a little scratchy on the front and the reverse but to see if I can get a little more smoothness otherwise it performs really well outside of like just out of the box um, and uh, I don't really have any complaints about it I just love to see if there's something I can do to make it even better but uh, this is my little mixer um, and I hope you enjoyed this drawing. Now on to my other conclusions about this pen. Okay, so uh, in a last ditch effort to make this the longest video I've ever made, just kidding, but not really. Um, I thought I'd take this pen right here and compare it to some other pens that I have that are of a similar size and uh, some that you might be more familiar with if you've never seen this uh, Jinhao 51A up close before. Um, I mentioned the Pilot Metropolitan. The size is pretty similar, um, but some differences are this pen doesn't have that massive step down, which I'm not a huge fan of. And it is a little bit thinner. I did think that this was the thinnest pen I own, but looking at the Noodler's Nib Creeper, which I did a review of a little while back, this one might be a little bit thinner. There's also that step up here on the cap and the really long and kind of thick threads on this pen that make it a little bit harder to hold wherever you want. Um, this is a Pentel Pocket Brush Pen which I may do a review of in the coming weeks. I'm planning on one for the Metropolitan as well. Um, and this is the Twisby Eco, the most recent pen review that I did. If you're looking at this in comparison to the 51A, the size, the height is about the same. It's definitely a lot thicker. And uh, which one you choose for yourself might depend on your preferences. Personally, I like having a wide range of lots of different things. So those are my pen comparisons.
Now that we're done with our drawing sample, I want to give a few closing thoughts about this pen, pros and cons, and whether or not I think that this pen right here is a good fountain pen to use for art. And um, first of all, my conclusion, absolutely, I think it's um, a great tool. It's something that I've enjoyed using. The, one of the big key features, I think, for me is the ability to do reverse writing and, and uh, the traditional way of holding the pen is like having two different pens at two different line weights. And for the drawing that I did, that came in handy quite a lot. Um, so that's a pro. Again, the design is, I really like the design. The fact that it's made of wood is really cool. It's a slim line profile um, and it's very uh, symmetrical. So I like those things about it. Um, the things that I don't like about it, I mentioned a few of them before this stamping of the of the front here is a little bit weird and off. Um, the pen doesn't feel very good when you put the cap on. That's something that I noticed, even though it does actually post really nicely. So that's a positive thing. Um, another thing that I noticed about this pen that's kind of a, a negative is that the fact that this section is so almost symmetrical, it's really easy to accidentally hold the pen sideways. And especially with the hooded nib, that's not going to give you any line at all. So um, if you're using a pen like this, make sure you use that typical fountain pen wrist pressure, not pushing down too hard. And if, um, if the ink doesn't come out, you may want to check and see if uh, you're holding it wrong. Because that happened to me several times in the course of my drawing. So that's a negative detractor. But for me, I really like uh, the thin lines that it gives me, the ability to do reverse writing consistently. Uh, it's a fantastic pen for artists. I'm not sure if the same would be said for it as a writing utensil. That would have to be um, maybe someone else's opinion. But I've been using it a lot for sketching. I have been using it for taking notes as well um, at meetings and things. And it performs very well. So um, those are my conclusions and uh, thanks for stopping by.